long ago and far away, in a time when the world was first created, there was a rainbow bridge to earth. The world was beautiful. Trees, streams, mountains and valleys, deserts and plains wound their way over the planet. Birds made nests, fish swam in crystal clear waters, frogs hopped, squirrels scampered, and roosters crowed to greet the sun every morning. The angels were pleased. One angel in particular, whose name was Ariel, looked down at the earth in amazement. So Ariel did a little hop, skip, and a jump, landed on the rainbow bridge, and whoosh, slid down all those colors straight to earth. Ah, I am so amazed, she said to a cohort of other angels who watched her from above. There is beauty all around. I like it here. I think I will go explore. A bee buzzed up just then and said, Buzz, buzz, Ariel the angel, there are bears near my nest. Oh, said Ariel, I will help them to eat the apples from the apple tree instead. So, without them even knowing it, Ariel led the bears to the apple tree. Now the time that Ariel came was, as I said, long ago. So long ago that the people paddled canoes up and down the lake where they lived. They were the people of the lake. They lived on the land, fished the waters, and gave thanks every day for the bounty of life all around them. They also had potlatches, a celebration where they gave what they had away to one another. The more they gave, the richer they were. They did this because they knew about the dragon that lived in a secret place inside of us, the dragon of greed. The dragon legend has it, hoards silver and gold and clothes and food and toys and tools and thinks they are all his. He wants things now and must have them for himself. The people of the lake knew that the dragon was always there, so in defiance of greed gave things away and shared what they had with others all around them. They also shared with family and friends. They even shared what they had with strangers. Much, much later, when more families began moving to the lake, and Ariel had been on the earth for a long, long while. The people of the lake saw that those who came did not know about the dragon and began to keep things for themselves and became more and more impatient. We need help, they prayed, not for us, but for those who came after us, for they do not remember. Ariel, the angel of amazement, heard their plea and knew exactly who to turn to. Electro, the angel of strength, flew down the rainbow bridge and upon arriving said in a loud, strong voice, Enough! I bring strength! With Electro's help, people began to lend a hand, wait for others, and not ask for quite so much. They began to feel better, too. Now there was a fish in the waters of the Kootenai Lake named after the people who lived there and who still lived there. Francesca the fish was older than most and had learned to wait patiently for all things. She knew that everything had its time and its place and all you needed to do was to learn to ride the waves of the water even in stormy weather. She learned to swim with the currents, not against them and by doing so, enjoyed her life immensely. She had a special friend, Emma, who lived far to the north near the ocean. One day she watched as a flock of geese landed near her little eddy by the banks of the shore. 
Most of the geese, she noted to herself, stayed together and were content to roost in the sandy beach or by the reeds over near the rocks. One gander named Gus was curious to explore past the boundaries of the sandy beach, so curious that he constantly got into trouble for pushing past fences, gates, and even garden doors. This happened almost every day. He didn't mean to be pushy. He was just being curious. Francesca knew that he had forgotten the golden rule of all geese, namely to honk first before moving the, through the barriers put in front of him. That way others would know he was coming and would either move out of the way or warn him of the dangers behind the fence. Gus was simply too young to know better. Francesca watched as time and time again Gus got into trouble. Then she noticed that he slowly learned to honk first, which alerted the other geese in the flock to help protect and guide him. Soon Gus was playing happily while still being curious, and all the other geese around him loved his curious nature. He no longer got into trouble. Now near Gus the Gander lived a very special family who lived in a house of light. They had chosen to live near the Kootenai Lake and to raise their family there near the water that they could canoe on like the people who lived on these shores long, long ago. They loved to live where geese, bears, fish, swans, birds, bees, and apple trees grew. Their names were Mama and Mom, Franny and Theo. They had a dog they named Darwin who loved to run away even though he loved and protected them. Sometimes he just couldn't help himself. In their house lived an angel even they didn't know about, but Guest was there at times, especially when everyone felt so warm and safe and loving with one another. Iggy was his name and he was an angel of light. He loved his special family and often sat on Mama's shoulder when she was making films that so many people enjoyed. Iggy so loved her films that he sent ideas in the form of inspirations. Mama was the kind of person who could catch those ideas and turn them into golden images. Iggy brought his light to everyone. Franny and Theo got sprinkled with light crystals every day, but especially when sleeping. Their house of light got even brighter when Iggy read Mom's poetry. Mom knew how to dig deep into the nature of words, which even the angels listened to. Each word, carefully crafted, was like adding even more light to Iggy's soul, and he knew that he would never, ever leave. Light, as Iggy well knew, was truth inside of us. He vowed to live by this truth and to help his very special family do the same. Iggy would sit by their side and dip into his jar of light and sprinkle their dreams with all good things like kings and queens and princesses, but now we're getting ahead of the story. Now one night while everyone was sleeping, the king of the dream world came to visit. Iggy had told him that the children needed a little help being patient and respectful of not only one another, but most of all with themselves. So the king arrived with his golden sword and cut away impatience, pushiness, dominance and despair from the hearts of all those sleeping there. The next day, on a ledge near another lake called the Slocan Lake, over a mountain and through another valley, lived the swans. They arrived in late fall from the far north to winter on the shores of the lake, where they felt safe and warm. Lily and Leo were trumpeter swans. They waited patiently without pecking each other, while their mothers, Lane and Lanny, flew off in search of dinner. Lily and Leo lived on the mountain ledge for quite some time, 
until they grew some white wings of their own and could fly high in the sky over the mountains, trees, and streams where the bears, squirrels, and bees made their home. One day, while they were flying together, they saw a water nymph whose name they learned was Noel. Noel was a happy nymph, so happy, in fact, that it was eternal spring around her. Butterflies flew in and out of her hair, while rushes at the shore swayed to the sound of her tinkling laughter. Noel was happy because she thought she lived in the most beautiful place in the world. She could also see Ariel, the angel of amazement, and Electro, the angel of strength, and Iggy, the angel of light. They were friends. It was Noel who introduced them to Olivia, the angel of love. Oh, Olivia said when she met them all, I love you, Ariel, Electro, and Iggy, and as our very special family, Mom, Mama, Franny and Theo already knew, love is what makes family. Sometimes Iggy invited Olivia to sit by the bedsides of his family, and while he sprinkled light crystals from his jar of light, Olivia would warm their hearts and ease all tensions a day can bring until everyone slept deeply. That was when the dream prince and princess would arrive, in the warm and dreamy minds of the children, but also in Mama and Mom's ear. They would whisper reminders of help and support for the next day. Count to ten or more when you want something, they said one night or another night. Watch and look first before jumping into the dance. There will be a time to act. Watch and listen for it. The right time will always come. The Queen of Dreamworld was pleased when the prince and princess whispered those reminders to this very special family because she remembered that it was not that long ago that they needed those reminders themselves. The queen then took out her golden quartz sword and circled it high over the forms of the children and their mothers, saying, Quietly travel upon your quests, patching your quilt as you go, for rips and tears will happen along the way. The queen, with the help of her sparkling quartz sword, gave them the resolve to patch their quilts. They had another friend, Ryan the rabbit, who lived up the hill in a backyard den. She really liked where she lived, for she could see the Kootenai Lake winding its way westward on the way to the ocean. She also knew Iggy and Olivia quite well. In fact, she sometimes hopped down the hill to visit with Darwin, their dog. She loved them all so much that she would sit and make up stories to tell them. They were like her family, too. Ryan hopped up the mountain one day and followed a steep and sharply skittish stream back down the path. The stream was on its way to water the animals, plants, and people who lived all along Kootenai Lake. It knew what it had to do and sometimes, in the spring, got so excited that it flooded its banks in impatience to get where it was going, shouting loudly all the while but later learned to calm down and take its time. It always got where it was going and learned that instead of shouting, it could sing instead. The stream liked to bring water to everything and knew that sometimes it had to crawl inside a garden hose to water the plants. It really liked to water an apple tree in Darwin's backyard. The tree was older now and had seen more than a few children swing under its branches. Franny and Theo liked to climb it, but when they were little, they would sit on a swing under one of its strong limbs. One day, Franny fell off and hurt herself. The tree, of course, was devastated, but could do nothing, so he beseeched the heavens by shaking his green and shiny leaves. As Franny cried and Theo ran to get Mom, Yulani 
uplifting angel of the heavens arrived to help. She always knew when anyone in the family was hurt, and though they could not see her or even feel her presence, she was there nonetheless. She too lived in the undergrowth of dreams. When understanding dawned after a disagreement or difficulty, you can bet that Yualani was there. Iggy's family lived in the little town of Nelson, which lies in the valley, which holds the sun in its embrace every morning and every evening. The valley too loved its job and looked forward to those precious few moments when the sun arrived to hold it within its embrace. It knew the value of the sun, which warmed all things and gave them life. It also held the waters of the glacier within its various fingers and let them stream down to bring the joy of growth into all things living. The valley knew how very vast the sun and the water really were and was so proud to behold them. Then the wild wind whipped the waters of the lake into a wary wall of foam and froth. Francesca the fish swam to the very bottom, and as she always did at times like this, for even she did not like the wildness of the wind. Noel asked the wind to calm down. Olivia warmed up the wind with her loving heart until the wind on the water became warm and still once more like a child asleep upon the bed. And because the children, like the wind, sleep, Xavier, another angel, made his appearance. Xavier brought his xylophone with him and gently played it in their dreams. Yvette, the last angel to arrive, as she only comes at night when the moon is out, quietly chants to all who sleep under this house of light. Yes, you are beautiful. Yes, you are strong. Yes, you are light-filled. Yes, you are loved. Yes, you are uplifted. Yes, you are extraordinary. Yes, you are you. The end for now. The light filled amazement, strength, and uplifting, extraordinary love radiating from Iggy's family traveled far and away across oceans and continents, spreading good cheer all over the world. Zoe the zebra felt it. He just couldn't help it. He had to jump into the story somehow, and that is another story waiting to be lived before it is told.